Here we go again, and the focus of this video is media linkage. We've collected all the burial photographs, and now we have to get those linked up. You'll remember in Family Historian, you can see the actual burial photograph in narrative reports. That's not yet possible in Roots Magic, even in the latest version, as you'll see from this user. I'm also going to skim through some data screens, which I'll expand on in future videos. So if you want to get notifications of those videos, hit the subscribe button down below, followed by the bell. I'm also going to look at natural soaring events. We all know that birth comes before christening, comes before baptism, death comes before burial and cremation. But Roots Magic don't sort those in a natural order. Family historian do. They display life events in a natural order, which you can see from this help file extraction. Our final task for the next videos will be renaming those files into a meaningful file name. Um, a lot of users strive to do that so that they can search for them on their computer. I also have input from another Roots Magic Migrant to Family Historian and the way he's developing his file name structures. It's a matter of finding out what works best for you and the file name really needs to be relatively unique. I've showed on previous videos how you can just find a photograph or whatever on Facebook, click over to the person's media tab, drag it over, rename it and click add. And there it is against the person. What we can do is we can view that in the media. There's the file name that we gave it and it's lifted this title from the Facebook image. All nice and simple, but that's not what we're here for. What we are here for is to look at how to link media from the files that we took in the cemetery. So this is the media list, media gallery in Roots Magic. So click the media button, view all media, and it gives you this list. Now there's various filters here on the top bar. This is all media. If I select individual media, I should have mostly pictures of individuals there. If I select family, same applies. You've also got event fact media, place media, source media, and let's look at citation media, because I'm a lumper. So all my citation media is in there. If you don't know what a lumper is, Google um, source splitter lumper for a full explanation. I'm not going to go into it further. The one we're most interested in is this new unlinked media. And you can see I don't have any. And that's the way you want to try and keep your file, that there's no orphaned files that are still to be linked. I'm going to show you later in the video how to find orphaned files on your hard drive within your media collection, which maybe somewhere you've just overlooked linking them up, or the links have been broken in some way and been detached from your file. That'll be towards the end of the video. You'll notice that Windows Explorer has appeared with the gravestone photographs we took on our last cemetery trip. My folder structure and the subfolder of the genealogy folder, I have gravestones. And after gravestones, I have all of the different cemeteries that I've collected images from. These are the images we took in Carmoni Cemetery, Maine. And all I have to do now is to highlight all of these and drag them to family historian. You can see the little plus symbol, let go. Don't copy link only. You've also got the option to put them in your project folder if you wish. I'm gonna choose don't copy link only. Add, and there they are. Under the new unlinked media, that's all of our new media images to be linked up. I'm not gonna change the file name journaling at this point in time. All I'm gonna do is link them to the appropriate people and events. This is the gravestone we done the transcription of, and this is the gravestone we're going to work with. So first I want to see this in a little more detail. So I'm going to double click it. I can zoom in with my mouse wheel and I can move about by using the left click button and the activating the grab hand. But you can see it's still quite difficult to read that. Thankfully we had Otter, so I'm going to paste in the transcription that we got from Otter. And I'm going to start tidying that up a bit. That's us nicely cleaned up. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the date of the first burial. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into the date. File name I'm not going to change at this point in time. I'm free to change the title if I wish, but that'll be up to your own standard what way you want to do that. So here we are all tidied up. I'll mention keywords more in the future. You can add multiple keywords here. At the moment we just have picture. 
we go to links, we have zero links. We have a couple of options here, add simple link, or we have add frame link. We'll come back to add frame link later. Add simple link gives me the choice of an individual, a family, a place, a source, or a note. In the case of an individual, that's going to link it to the primary photo for the individual. And if it was an individual photograph, that would be fine. We don't want to use that. So I'm going to activate the media link tool. And here we have a search box. Now we have Surgeoner Joseph and his wife Martha. So let's have a look. We know from the age of the gravestone that Joseph was born about 1891. These are listed in birth order. Let me look down. Joseph, 1891, wife Martha. I believe that's our Joseph. So what I do, so I'm gonna click on Joseph's facts here to open them up. I've got born, I've got died. I don't have a burial event for Joseph. So let me add one. I'm gonna double click on Joseph. Nothing happened as you can see, except it did on my second monitor. Here's my property box. Now I have this fully floating and I suppose I should really show you how to do that now. If you go to Tools, Preferences and Workspaces, this is normally checked by default. If I do Restore Defaults, this is the way it is. What I can do is Disable Property Box Management and you can see these have all changed now. There's a good video from Phil Leslie who was a TMG migrant. He goes through all of the properties and how he customised Family Historian to his own needs. Check it out. If I go to the Facts here and I'm going to add a fact I'm going to add a burial. That's just how I record my details. So Carmony Parish is where the cemetery is. Carmony Main is the subsection of that area. And the plot number is S80. That's all I need to do. And you can see that immediately, I'll just move that off to my second monitor again. But now we have the burial fact here. So you don't drag the media to the fact, you drag the fact to the media. Add simple link, yes. And there we have our first link. Let me go back to Joseph and we can see Martha here, but I can't get at Martha's facts. So how do I add another link to Martha? Well, here's how you do it. I expand Joseph's facts again. I go down to parents and I go down to spouse. I click the little checkbox to the left of Martha and this gives me the family. Check again. And now I've got Martha's facts. Martha doesn't have a burial either, so let me bring my box back in again and I will just add a burial fact for Martha. There we are. Let's move this off again and we can see now Martha does have a burial fact. And I just take that, drag it to the image, add a simple link and that's that done. Family Historian is very friendly as regards how you can move about. You don't have to close down screens and move the other screens all of the time. Let me do a, an Ancestor and Descendant diagram for Martha whilst we have her highlighted. Martha Connolly. And now we have this. Now from a diagram, I can highlight any person and move straight to creating a narrative report. But let's do Martha since Martha was the person in focus. Narrative report, individual narrative. Martha Connolly, and there we are in the narrative report again with the photograph. You can see it's all very interactive. Here's our media window we can go back to. Here's our chart and here's our report. There's also the possibility at the bottom of the screen to add a simple link by clicking this button. The one that's greyed out is add frame link and I'm going to quickly demonstrate that to you now. And I happen to know that this is a photograph of Lizzie Willis and her brother. I'm going to double click on this one and again zoom in. This is Lizzie, this is her brother. I go to the media link tool. This time I search for Lizzie Willis. This is Lizzie on the bottom. So this is a primary photograph. You can see that with Lizzie just highlighted, forget about her facts, I have add frame link or add simple link. So I can either add the frame link this way or just drag Lizzie to the photograph. It's saying add a frame link to Lizzie Willis. I'm going to do that. And what I do is just draw around her face. I'm going to proceed anyway, because I already have that link in the file. Let me see, this is William. So I drag a frame link over, add frame link to William. I just drag that round William, and that's a new link added. 
I can toggle between those links or show all links using these buttons. So we have William highlighted. Let's go to publish, narrative report, individual, William Willis. And there he is with our sectioned picture that we have just added. So that's adding frame links. I have to pause there for a second because this post recently on Roots Magic users, this user says I have a lot of photo images containing multiple people, mostly family members. I'm wondering whether I should go through the useless, horrible, nightmarish task of cropping out each person in these photos for the primary person image. Or should I wait until RM actually implements the in-app cropping feature that appears to already be in the RM8 database schema. It's also in the RM9 database schema, but it was in the RM4 database schema, introduced back in 2008. I'm not sure how long Richard would like to wait, but I've had to move on. And you can see by all these cropped thumbnails just how much time I wasted back in Roots Magic days just because a Roots Magic initiative from 2008 was never completed. I said I would briefly mention data screens. The ability to view selected data in one glance is a very important feature which Family Historian allows me. Here I can see the marriage date, spouse, father's name, father's occupation, and the person's relationship to Root, all in one view without any switching or clicking. None of these family items are available to add to the people view in the latest version of Roots Magic. And it's also worth stating the relationship is automatic in Family Historian and manual in Roots Magic. Switching to the family view again, I can customize this to my own preferences. I have this set to view the couple, a child count, and then the given names up to the first 10 children. And you can increase that if you wish. I'm sorted here on the first child's given name and you can see Family Historian is further sorting on child count descending as that's the way it's set. I can look for unusual naming patterns and identify possible duplicates and here's one example. The father's surnames are spelled differently, given name is the same and the child's name of Susan is the same. However, if I expand the details on these two instances, I immediately see the dates and geography simply do not match up, so they're purely coincidental. All very useful in my research. If I look at the family view in the latest version of Roots Magic, you'll see there are four columns which can be sorted on, but you can't add any further columns. When you wish to see more details in Roots Magic, you need to drill through the tabs on the side panel and you can only examine one family at a time. This is the family historian individual view out of the box. And to quickly load any custom view, you simply need to right click on the header configure columns and load from query. You can save several custom layouts for your own needs and load them quickly this way. I will save my individual and family setups to the shared Dropbox folder to help you get started and you'll find the link for those in the video description down below. I think this is the default media window setup giving you the option to sort by caption, type, file name, links, path or when last worked. Before I leave screen layouts, I should just add that you can right click on any row or a thumbnail to add a simple link that way. I said we'd talk about natural sort order and I think the best way to explain that for Roots Magic users is through the forum snippets. So here we have the first user who says he has an infant born, died and buried the same day. But the program sorts the facts, burial, death and then birth. I tried to edit the fact, but just switched the order back. 2016, why oh why must death come before birth when the dates are the same? Please fix this so that we don't have to add after and before. Is there a way to automatically list the burial fact after the death fact when the dates are the same? Is there a way in RM8 to force the burial fact to follow the death field if you don't know the actual burial date? This guy's actually been cheating. And you shouldn't have to cheat in a genealogy program. Here we are banging up the date. Is anyone having trouble with the sort date in RM9? So you've seen reports there from 2015 banging up the date with the latest version of Roots Magic. Natural sorting of events is an unresolved issue in Roots Magic and so it remains to the frustration of many users. So let's look at it in a little bit more detail. 
When I was entering the data from Martha and Joseph, I found that both the death date and the burial date were the same on the Newton Abbey website. It's absolutely the same for Joseph. They must just do that maybe by default. 21st March, 21st March, and that reminded me of a problem that Roots Magic users have often complained about. Here we are in Roots Magic 7, and you can see that the burial, because it's entered later, there's no sort order, no natural sort order between death and burial. And what Roots Magic users have to do is they have to go in here to the sort date, and they have to put like hyphens and different things after it just to get it to sort right. Is that still the case in the latest version of Roots Magic? Let's take a look. So here's the same details and we go down we can see that the burial is listed before the death now if i look at that in family historian i look at his facts died followed by burial but look at the date they've both got exactly the same date if i want i can add a specific sort order to that a separate sort order but i don't need to so what's family historian doing that's different from roots magic if i look at the help file there's a natural order of events we all know that birth comes before baptism, birth comes before christening. We know that death comes before burial, death comes before cremation. So family historian is just smart enough to order those in a natural sequence of events. That's been long, long wished for in Roots Magic, it just never came about. That means users have to put a lot of extra effort in just to get things to sort in the right order. That's all time wasted for me. I did say I would demonstrate how to find orphaned files that are not linked up to your media collection. In Roots Magic, the best ongoing workaround I could find was to just make a folder for all new files and I called it New Scans and Documents. And then I worked through renaming them in there because I can't rename them in Roots Magic and finally linking them up from there. That was the best ongoing day-to-day -day workaround I could find. I did have a utility that I developed myself and I demonstrated that to Roots Magic many years ago, but it never came about. Let me show you how I do that in Family Historian. We're back to the new unlinked media items being zero. Everything's linked up. Here's my gravestones folder within my genealogy collection. And you can see all of the subfolders. If I type kind, image all of the image files within the gravestones folder and all of its subfolders are now highlighted and you can see here you've got 1044 items what i'm going to do i'm going to do control a and yes i'm going to drag them over now with 1044 files it's going to take a while i let go don't copy link only, add. You can see Family Historian is working hard at reconciling those, not only reconciling them, but not adding duplicates. So it's not just a matter of adding 1,044 new files. You'll see the balance is only those that are not currently linked to Family Historian. That took quite a few seconds to complete and I dragged a lot of my old Roots Magic collection in there that hadn't been renamed yet. But the result, we started off with 1044 files in all of the gravestone subfolders. The result here now is 482 files unlinked. So that's how I reconcile my files using Family Historian. So I end up with no orphaned files on my hard drive. Very powerful tool. Well, that's it. I hope you got something from that. As I say, the next video, probably the next video will be on thinking about how you should rename your files and the considerations that I apply and the considerations that another family historian user feels important. We'll consider that in the next video. And then after that, we'll look at how we can rename those within Family Historian. You can also rename in Family Tree Maker 2019 and I believe also Inheritus 2023. Sadly, not Roots Magic yet, but that will possibly come in the future. I really hope you got something out of the video and you can start chipping away at linking all your media to events or individuals or sources or citations. Family Historian will then become your digital sort of media library. You'll be able to find things at a touch of a few buttons. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell down below if you want to get notifications. If you enjoyed the video, I'd also appreciate a thumbs up to show some encouragement for the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time.